So let's start to look how we can create a gradient color here that will change the color in a rainbow effect based on our color that we can preset in advance. So let's start to look how we can create a gradient background color for a line chart. First of all, we need to make sure we have the border template. And this border template you can get here on chartgs3.com getting started, this link here, which you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, what we want to do here, well, in this case, if you want to support my channel or you want to get the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page here. So what we're going to do now is let's convert this first into a line chart. So we can say here the type, indicate it as line, there we are. Next, what I want to do is I want to get the background color ready before we convert this into a gradient. So what I'm going to say here, comma, fill the entire area, set this on true. By default, this is set on false refresh and there we are so what happened now is basically the background is being grabbed and based on the background color here but maybe these points here you want to have a separate color you can do that as well all we do is well let's do that one immediately copy this put it in here i'll just give it a direct item uh, direct filler point and then say uh background color and I make a solid so if you save this you should be able to spot the difference all right now we have this all done let's focus now on the color here so how do we do this well we have here this background color and what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out then what I want to do here is I'm going to say here another background color make sure we spell it correctly and then what I'm going to make here out of it is an object or sorry callback functionality so we have here the background color and then in here I'm going to say let's say the context grab that and then in here let's copy this entire structure we're going to put in this array of values so I want to use that but only in here and I want to make sure that the color will be gradual changing from one color to the other whatever we have selected here all right so then what i want to do here is the following things like that and you say here uh constant let's say here uh bg color or something like that just give them make this bg color equals this already very simple because i copy it but this is just a constant variable now what i want to do is i want to show you first of all what is our console log of context indicating in this callback functionality if i refresh here of course it becomes black because we didn't specify a return value so right now it says no color so you can see here we get all this information here what i want to do is i need to measure basically what in what the height would be in this current chart so how do we get this information well what we have to do here is we need to get basically the chart area where we can get the top to bottom height in pixels or uh, well the height and the top and the bottom position of it so what i want to do here is the following i go to say here context.chart.chart area save this refresh and as you can see here this is very important you will see it twice first undefined and then we get here the chart area details this undefined will give us an error if we're trying to get the values so what i want to do is i want to first make sure and the reason why we get undefined by the way is because it's initializing the chart so it starts to load and it's still loading and that's why you have this animation so in the beginning it still doesn't know how high the chart will be so what i'm going to do here i'm going to create an if statement and this if statement gives a protection we say here if there is no context chart area all I want to do then is say return nothing. Very simple. If I save this and let's put in this here afterwards, you'll see now that the undefined is now gone. It will only show once we did find anything. So this is very important. If you don't do this, you'll get an error. So now we can start to work with this and we can say here to, uh, well, basically what we need to have here is we have to break down this item or specifically this part here so i'm going to say here constant i'm going to do here an object destructuring if you're not familiar with an object destructuring uh i would recommend you to watch my other video in the description box understanding charges object destructuring and i'm going to use this the context.chart because this is the chart object that i want to split out 
So I'm going to say here, CTX, because I want to draw on the canvas. What I want to have more is, I want to get the data. And then what I can do here is uh, the chart area. And the chart area specifically, I need to get here the top position and bottom position. So now I have this. What I want to do here is the following. I'm going to say here, constant. I'm going to say gradient background. And this will be equal to the CTX. And this is CTX is for drawing in the canvas, create a linear gradient effect. So in here we have the x1 or the x or sorry the x starting, the y, spacing the x and y coordinates, and then we have here the width and the height. Since I only want to focus on a top to bottom effect, where we get well basically it's horizontal, but it will focus. I guess uh, I want to cover it from the very top of the chart area to the bottom, but including this area here. But I will just ignore these, the x. And the width so it will by default just focus on full item here but then what i want to say here i want to start at the very top and i want to go here down to the bottom so now we have this part so what we're going to do now is we're going to put in a color and i'm going to say a constant for uh, not even constant no i'm going to say here gradient and after later on i will soft coat this so don't worry about that gradient and we're going to say you add color stop and this requires two variables. First one is a starting point in percentage, which is in this case zero. And zero would indicate the very top of this item. And the highest would be one, which would be 100%, which is the very bottom of the position of the chart area or of our shape. So then we have here the second item, and that would be the color. So the color could be, let's grab this one here, or we can just say here, BG color index zero then what i want to do is just for the sake of it i want to add up here let's add up three then I say halfway through i want to have another color which is the number two of the index or index one and an index uh number two which is element number three and we say this is one if i save this and then we say here return and what i'm going to return is the gradient color you should get a desired design all right, as you can see here, it works in a rainbow design. But of course, what I want to do, I want to grab all of these points here, these colors that we have indicated in here. So what we could do is the following. We're going to say here a few things. First of all, what I need to know is basically how many colors we have. We can basically, we can call it the color trenches. Every layer of color is a trench or a layer of color. So whatever you want to call it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here color trenches or layers. And I'm going to say here this will be equal to what exactly. What I want to do is I want to divide. This. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we have here trench, make sure we spell this correctly. The reason why I want to do this is because we have 100% here. So what I need to do is whatever is the value, then I need to divide this by the length of the amount of colors that we have. Minus one, of course, because the starting point is zero. So what I'm going to say here, um, well, basically I can just say here, background color dot, uh, I guess, length. And then I'm going to say here, minus one. When I do this, I will get here a certain value. Let's look at this value, the color trench. You can see here we get this, all right. We get now a negative value, which is not allowed. Sorry, this is my mistake. And the reason why we have this here is I need to prioritize the deduction first before we divide it. Because the division gets priority over deduction. Alright, so now I get here. Every item here is basically 16%, 16.6% to be accurate uh, of the item here. So that amount of pixels should eventually work on the height that we have here so what i'm going to say here is well what we can do here now let's do here a for loop four and then we say uh, let i equals zero then i'm going to say here we're going to loop into i as long as bg color length uh that's here minus one let's say i plus plus put that in here I'm going to grab this put that in there 
then we're going to say here of course the i and then this what we need to do here is we're going to say here zero plus the i multiplied by whatever the color trench index is and we get these numbers and then we will keep on going uh whatever the value would be so once we have this we can remove all of that let's save this and see what happens all right and as you can see here now we get something although i'm wondering where's our black color interestingly enough i feel like we are missing the black color and uh let's see here what is the reason for that all right so after looking i realized we probably don't have to deduct this one here because we have no equal here if you do an equal then probably we would need that but if we do like this we should have the working model there we are we have like from top to bottom exactly like this we could swap this as well how can we swap this you can swap this item or we change this one here where we can say instead of uh, one you go to zero and you do exactly the opposites here anyway that's it for for now